this is Monique. Let's do one more project. This time I made a sensory bunny. It has a crinkly ear, it has a bell in the ear, it has a wooden carrot, it has all kinds of different textures to feel. Anyway, I made it for my new grandchild. Do you want to see a picture? Okay, maybe later. I'll show you a picture. This bunny started in the garage with the Dremel and a vise. I found an old piece of broomstick and I, I don't know, I didn't video that because that was just too scary. I hacked at it with the Dremel until I had something that I thought kind of looked like a carrot, kind of, sort of. Anyway, then I painted it orange and green. Next to the embroidery software to lay out the pattern for the face and I went ahead and put the tummy on top of that so I only had to move one file. In order to make these appliques, it took lots of layers. There was a stabilizer on the bottom, there's some fleece, there's a different kind of stabilizer on the top that is for fleecy kind of fabrics, and then there is the gray fabric that is going to be sort of the mouth area cheeks. Uh, that went on the machine and it sewed all the way around with all the layers there. Now, sometimes you might have an applique that would do a single stitch and you could trim it and then go back and do the zigzag but this is oh that was my husband's hand this is just all the way around with the satin stitch and then i take it off the machine but not out of the hoop not out of the hoop and cut away the extra gray so that i can continue with the other parts of the embroidery i didn't get super close now because nothing else was going to be right up next to it so it was going to be okay but then i moved on to the little cheek pads there two little circles on either side of that nose now so far nothing is really super sensory other than the fact that it's a nice soft fleece. But then when I put the nose on there, that's sort of a velvety kind of fabric on top of the smooth fabric. Anyway, ears. I have to tell you, the ears were too big at this point. And then somewhere along the way, I didn't really show you everything I did to the ears. But the important part is here, the part that makes it so fun, the sensory part. This is like a Mylar gift bag. And so I put that in the middle of one ear and that makes it all of a crinkly kind of sound. Remember, right sides together. So that's why the mylar is on the outside. The pink faces the gray so that it's right sides together. So around that and then cut off the point, trim the seam allowance and clip the curve so that it will turn and be smooth and not make funny changes because it's too stiff. Good old chopstick there to help get the point out. Not a bamboo skewer because a bamboo skewer is too sharp. And then the other ear has a bell in it. So I used a piece of ribbon to let the bell hang down into the middle and so that it could move a little more inside of the ear. So hopefully it would ring. And it, and it did. In the end, it came out to be nice. But I used a piece of ribbon there, you see, to make the bell suspend down into the open part of the ear. Same thing. Clip off the point, trim the seam allowance, clip the curbs, turn it inside, turn it, sorry, not inside out, right side out and use the chopstick to make the point nice and pointed instead of sort of flat. Then I did a, just a little top stitch around the edge to keep it from rolling out too much. Like I said, the ears were a little bit too big and by that I mean too long, I ended up cutting them a little bit shorter than they are here. Now we're gonna move on to the little paws, I guess is what a rabbit has. One of them gets a ribbon, that is so that the carrot can be held by the paw and played with a little bit, but a little bit free motion from it. So I just put a long piece of green ribbon onto that paw so that it would be a place to attach the carrot. The other one I have to tell you, at some point you might see a bead, a big wooden bead in there. I didn't like the way that came out. So ditch the bead. One paw has a carrot and the other paw is nothing. A nice bow, because this is a little boy. So I folded that ribbon in half to the middle. Does that make sense? The two ends came in to the middle sewed them together and then made another piece to be the loop around in the middle to, and squish it down just a little bit so that it's like a bow tie uh, not like a big girl bow that would be squished more in the middle the bow tie was only squished just a little bit there in the middle folded the raw edges all in so that it won't ravel because uh, ribbon will ravel and you don't want that sew it all down good then I sewed him right there underneath the chin you can see the the nose now the little pink nose that's a velvet and a little smiley face mouth and the eyes. The white part on the eyes is a little bit thicker and you can feel on it. Um, and the tummy fabric that, you know, just applicate on there. It is a, a super soft velvety kind of fabric so that this sensory bunny has lots of different textures to feel and to make different sounds. A carrot for something really hard. 
I wanted to stuff the tummy just a little bit. So from the inside, I cut open the backside of the tummy and filled that with just a little bit of polyfill just to make him a little bit fluffy because he's kind of a flat bunny when he's done, but just to make his tummy a little bit fluffy. And then this is like, I don't know, Dr. Frankenstein came in to close up the tummy. It's going to be inside the bunny. No one's ever going to see it. I just didn't want the, the polyfill to come out. So you see just long, big stitches there and then tie them off at the back. Also notice that white square. That is some interfacing on the back side of the bow to help keep it straight and not let it pull through. I should have drawn a pattern in advance. This was really an on-the-fly kind of project, wasn't it? So I'm like, ah, oh, those look good for the head. I'll just draw it on there. Anyway, sewed these two stitches on the machine in order to attach this little sort of hair at the top. Mark kind of where the top was between the ears and then have this gray DMC. Someone went to a garage sale and bought me this whole box of someone's old DMC thread. Not that I didn't have a big stash already, but hey, more the merrier, right? So instead of just going back and forth on the hair, I went through both of those and around the one that was the farthest away to help keep those loops from ever being able to be pulled out. And to start with, the hair goes down so that it goes inside of the seam allowance and not up like it's going to be when it's finished, but right now up would take it outside of the seam allowance. So down and inside the seam allowance, make a loop, go back through both stitches, and then make one more turn around that one that's the farthest away so that the hair doesn't eventually turn into one big long loop. This way it'll stay nice little tight fun loops on the top of the head. There it is. Look how cute. Another texture there. Now we're going to wing it and draw a body. In hindsight, I made it, I would have made it just a touch bigger than he is, but he came out really cute anyway. Now I trim that around and then I'm going to put the arms on to the side where I want them. See there, the arms, ignore those ears. We'll talk about those later. I tack the ears, the, the, oh, the arms on. See that ball, don't talk about that ball. He didn't come out the way I wanted. Then I added one layer of batting in the middle so that he's flat, but that he's not completely flat. Uh, those ears, they just weren't right. So I left them at the top and didn't sew them. And then I came back to them. After I had the body the way I wanted, I came back and I just cut the ears a little shorter and then folded the sides into the middle, kind of the way we did with the bow, where the outside edges get folded in to the middle. So, ah, oh, there it is. Look at those ears. How cute. Anyway, so then I, once I'd sewn that up, I had an opening on the side to turn this right side out. But now he needs a little cottontail. I mean, what kind of bunny would he be without a cottontail? A piece of fur. Fur is nasty. I just have to tell you, when you cut it, it's worse than the cats. It just sheds everywhere. So, long basting stitch, which is just a long straight stitch, pull the bobbin thread. It's going to slip easier just because of the nature of how a machine sews. So when you have a basting stitch that you want to gather, pull the bobbin thread and not the top thread. So I pulled that tight and then I tied those in a knot and then I also tied the top thread in a knot just to help keep everything secure. And the little corners there, I used those as just a little bit of stuffing inside the tail. Now, the tail, he had to be sewn on by hand. Otherwise, I would have smushed down some of the fur and it would have just not been a nice little fluffy tail like it came out to be. So thread that needle with just that little bit sticking out. Didn't bring the thread to the needle, brought the needle down on top of the thread. I was able to get to the inside because I still had the hole on the side. The challenge was making sure I actually caught the fabric that is at the base of the fur for the bunny and not just the fur. I had to push it around a little bit and make sure that I caught all of it. Oh, did you see that? I think we had an earthquake. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just bumped the camera. Anyway, now I'm sewing up the side so that the bunny isn't, you know, bleeding out or dying there or have a hole in him. Nothing sad like that. Close him all up so that he's all nice and secure. Now I pre-drilled a hole in the end of the carrot so that the screw didn't split open the wood. And then I cut the ribbon a more reasonable length and used the other piece so that it looked a little more like the top of the carrot somehow. And, uh, and I screwed my wood screw through the ribbon so that it was in there secure. And then I screwed it on. So I'd screw a little bit and then I'd have to unscrew the ribbon because it would spin around with the screw. 
but I got that screwed all the way down tight so that that would hold it on there. I painted the top of it green. I think I knocked some of the green paint off when I screwed it, but it'll be okay. And there, look at this bunny. Remember, he has a bell in one ear, a crinkly ear, a carrot, four or five different textures to fill on, a bow. Lots of fun little things to entertain your little one. Thanks for joining. I hope you got inspired to make something like that for a grandkid or who knows who, maybe your dog. I don't know. Anyway, remember, beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. See you next time.